Beijing's huge airport. Free internet. First and business class passengers and star going members may board at any time. Landing at Chongqing Airport. <laughs> So this is the second day. I arrived in Beijing yesterday and uh, I didn't see much of the place because it was already dark. Stayed in this classy hotel, got up this morning and took a flight to Chongqing, which is uh, where two rivers join. Another river comes into the Yangtze. It's also the place where that English businessman was, was murdered and where the former chief of the state is going on trial any moment. The airlines are very good, but there's a tremendous walk between the um, between where the plane lands and the um, and the picking up the luggage. For example, in Beijing, I had to walk about a quarter of a mile, uh, go downstairs, take a train or a sort of a shuttle train for about uh, two miles, and then walk another half mile then, and then I could pick up my bags. But uh, everything runs smoothly. Everything, of course, is incredibly modern. It hasn't taken long for the Chinese to uh, adopt the capitalist way of life. I had a coffee uh, near the place where, uh, near the gate we departed from on the airline. The coffee was like five bucks. Um, and uh, all the big, incredible designers and famous names here, Hermene uh, Gildo, Magno, whatever the hell his name is, um, a lot of them have uh, video displays of catwalks and model walking. More later. A pretend seal playing with a little ball at the counter here while they're selling toys and candy. <laughs> How cute. That's quite a load. And by no means clear as to why we stopped here but this is some kind of a turtle but it's not what we've come to see it's sort of we're in a park I'm not quite sure what this is it's some kind of memorial to marriage or something like that but it's got dragons on it the ladies said no they're not, they're not selling these it's just some kind of a museum that we're going into I just paid a dollar and got it, got a lot of fish food. Now they're really scrambling. I'm going to throw the rest in. <laughs> they're great. Mm. I don't know what all these things are. It's just a regular museum, I suppose. Nice, comfortable little bed. Oh, these are interesting masks. There are a lot of Chinese daily papers. Here's a whole rack of them. There actually are two English language papers as well. One's called the Global Times and the other is the China Daily. In Shanghai they have a different English language one. Like so many countries the tap water is not really safe to drink so everybody drinks bottles. The hotels of course give you some bottles and charge you for others. I was pondering what this sign might mean 
But then, at the side of it is another sign which says, Person on Duties Room. <laughs> and there it is, the Person on Duties Room. There's apparently nobody in it, or anyway, the door's closed. And of course, all the Chinese papers cover the Oscars, as I suppose did papers all over the world. Several rooms, of course, devoted to very Chinese art. That's kind of nice. More flowers there. The rest of the party went upstairs and they're really taking an awful lot of time. I was reading some of the papers and there's a funny story about a woman who was arrested because um, she had read that um, if you're pregnant and you go on the subway you are privileged to have a seat and like everywhere the subways are very crowded so she bought some kind of device she could put under her clothes to um, um, pass off as being pregnant but unfortunately she didn't tie it on right and while she, she got the seat and while she was in the subway it fell off <laughs> So everybody made fun of her and shamed her, and now they're accusing her, I don't know if they charge you with fraud. There's a whole wall of pictures here, which I assume are Chongqing, although it doesn't actually say so in English anywhere. Pictures of ancient bars, for example, I suppose that is. Local monuments of various historic precedent. Two two rivers join here, there's the famous Yangtze and then another river comes in at Chongqing I don't know if that's it Give me one paragraph on concubines <laughs> One important thing about concubines that you tell people Were they happy? Um, they are not happy but they couldn't change Nothing anything. happy about it? This is their life that's no, right, right. They didn't choose it. This was it. it. Yeah, yeah. They couldn't choose. They couldn't choose. That's it's not something you'd want to do. <laughs> no. Yeah, no. no. Um, and you know, it's uh, it's not very good. You are in the, the old society. No, no. <laughs> especially <laughs> women. No, especially. Yeah. yeah. I'm sat outside Starbucks in downtown Chongqing. Just watching the people go by. Nothing special around here, otherwise I would have walked around, but uh, it's easy to just sit here and wait for the rest of them to come back. This river, also, this section, also called the Suspended River. Why? Because the riverbed is higher than the ground. So you can see the riverbed is higher than the ground. So before the Three Gorge Dam project, the people who live in this section always threatened by floods, by floods, always threatened by floods. But nowadays we don't have to worry because we built the Three Gorge Dam project to control the floods. Okay. okay, next one called Xunyang River, very big, very big river, but nothing special. Okay, the last one is the Yangtze River. So from this uh, from this picture, you can easy to tell Yangtze River just one of the seven sections of the whole river, right? But in your language, in English, we see the whole river as Yangtze River, right? So it's the wrong, your wrong, or our wrong. <laughs> And it is the longest river in China as well as in Asia. So by the way, do you know which is the longest river in the whole world? Do you know? Amazon. Amazon? The Nile. Amazon Nile? Amazon Nile? <laughs> okay, let's see. Longest river is Nile. Amazon the second. Okay, so Yangtze River is third longest river in the whole world. We're looking across the river and as you can see it's still so misty. You can barely see what's on the other side. When the boat stopped it was a place called Fengdu and uh, some of the party 
unwisely chose to go on the tour to the top of the mountain, up all kinds of steep steps without any rails on them. I'm happy to say I didn't go, but, I, but um, anyway, the town below the um, below the mountain was submerged years ago and was moved across the river. But it was so misty this morning, you couldn't even see across the river. Even now, as you can see, it's uh, not exactly clear. We're moving eastward along the river towards Shanghai, although we're not actually going to go that far. There are occasional boats passing, occasional uh, other boats sort of like this one, sort of semi-cruise liners. There's another river flowing in at this point, although I'm not quite sure what it is. Well, finally the mist has cleared and you can actually see the bank of the, uh, of the river. We're heading um, east towards Shanghai, as I said. Um, and uh, there's not too much going on and not too much to see. Some people have built Houses high on the hill above the river. Very few boats, to my surprise. I thought it would be a busy river, but maybe it's just not in this particular part. Seems to be opening up over here. Now, I don't know what they call this place, but I got up because I felt I wanted to walk on dry land for a moment or two. So finally I got off, and of course there's nothing to see now I'm here anyway, except that kind of castle in the distance. It's quite a walk up to the village or town, which I'm not actually going to do. This is the boat, the Sophia. I guess I'll go further back and show all of it. The Victoria Company claims to be, a Victoria Cruises claims to be an American company although it has no Americans running it, unless they're all in some offices somewhere. It's all entirely Chinese. It seems to have a huge shit staff. Anyway, this is the Sophia. I guess one of the older ones in its chain. Right next to the clinic on the fourth floor is this chart of Chinese medicine. So I came upstairs to smoke the first half of my first joint of the trip and there's a special smoking area even on this big open deck which is almost the only place you're allowed to smoke anyway. Anyway, so I'm sitting here looking over the rails and what do I spot but this huge barge length of, length of two football fields probably four-decker four place and a um, load of what appears to be sand and then I thought if only the people who are still against the weed understood what a uh, tranquilizing, calming uh, tool it is and should be applied in that way in the society in a sense I mean, we've gone through the argument so many times that all the people who oppose marijuana are the people who understand the least about it. But you would think that would be a good thing for the society, something that would calm people down, because it, it not only calms you down, but it awakens you mentally. And it makes you start thinking about things. And so uh, it's only when I get stoned and think about things like that then I'm able to come to that realization. It makes people much more tolerant about ideas and thoughts and opinions. And, and um, as I say, why is that not a benefit to society and not a danger? Anyway, anyway, there goes the barge in the distance. Another cruise ship is departing. I didn't even know it was there until now. I don't know where I left off, but anyway. So, if you walked across the river on these pontoons, which are across the river at many points, not just here, when we got on the boat originally, way back in uh, 
yesterday, it seems like a year ago. But to go to the village, you've got to walk all the way up there. And there's no transport. All the way around, up to the town, which in itself must take half an hour. And where I assume the tourists go, that go on these offshore trips, is to this, over here, sort of a castle, or a temple, or a pagoda of some sort, at the end of the bay, basically. <laughs> so I, I suppose that when the boat cleared out, a lot of people went there. So the largest group of people is here, who were basically waiting They've either got off the boat and waiting to get back, or the people from the village would come down here and watch the boats dock. Maybe act as porters, or, or steer you to some place of trade, or whatever. I have no idea. Maybe they're just people every day gather there. Anyway, it's quite a long walk. You have to go past through, through that if you want to go up to the village. So here comes this man starting to walk the plank, so to speak.